Koch, host of OWL TV show Faces for Good, and I'm here today with Ken Frankel, Head of Reference and Instructional Services at the Boca Campus Wimberley Library. Hi, Ken. Hello, Bob. How are you today? I'm well. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to uh, letting you know some of the different services and collections that we have at the uh, Wimberley Library here at the Boca Campus. Okay. Tell me about some of the collections. Well, you know, uh, our library is unique in uh, some of the collections that we have. I'd like to highlight a couple of them for you. Uh, one is called the Weiner Collection. Uh, Mr. Weiner was a businessman from the Northeast who donated a collection of materials from the Revolutionary War period. So these would be writings of the Founding Fathers and also the kinds of materials that they had in their own personal library. So these are materials from the 17 and uh, 1600s. Um, very rare material. That's uh, one of the unique collections. Another is our recorded sound archives, uh, a huge collection of uh, recorded music, uh, primarily in vinyl albums, but also even some of the earlier kinds of material like 78 RPMs and wax cylinders and all sorts of things. And uh, this is a collection that includes probably uh, over 100,000 record albums and uh, they're working there at digitizing some of this material and making it available over the web as well. So uh, those are two of the collections. Now both of those are located on the fifth floor of the library, which is not generally open to the public, uh, but you can make an appointment to use those and professors will also uh, bring their classes up there to use these collections as well. Um, another unique collection uh, is what's called the Jaffe Center for Book Arts. And uh, Mr. Arthur Jaffe established this collection at our library, mm -hmm. and it looks at books not for their content, but artists use the book, the form of a book, as a jumping off point to create art. Mm -hmm. And so they have uh, all sorts of books with p things that pop up or they're made yeah, out of unusual right. materials. Uh -huh. And uh, they, they conduct workshops there for artists to come in and uh, learn how to create these kinds of things. They even have a, a print shop with uh, printing presses from the uh, probably the 1800s and uh, some of the older ones as well. And uh, in addition to that, they um, also uh, have a paper making lab on campus, so they actually make paper as well. Very good. So how, those are just a few of them. How about the tattoo exhibit? Oh, you know, uh, we have exhibits in the library as well. So. Uh, we have uh, in, right in our lobby a collection of art which was donated uh, by some psychiatrists named the Charterkoffs, and that has some interesting pieces. But we also have uh, rotating exhibits that will change every uh, month or so. Some stay on a bit longer. Mm -hmm. And on the west wing of the library at this time, there's a pho uh, photographic exhibit on tattoos All that right. was done okay. here at FAU. So you can see some of the tattoos of FAU students in that exhibit. I'll have to check that out. Yes. That sounds very good. Tell me a little bit about uh, how someone would go about doing a search when they're looking for uh, certain titles, certain books. What's the easiest way to do it? Or is there like one, two, three? Well, there's a, f there's a few different ways you can approach searching for information in our library. Um, if you already know, a uh, if you're looking for a book, and want to uh, find a specific book or a specific author, we have a database called the Library's Catalog. So this includes things like books, ebooks. It includes um, some streaming video. It'll tell you any DVDs or audiovisual materials we have in the library. Um, so if you're looking for kind of a physical object in the library or an ebook, that's a good place to look. Now, if you're looking for a subject and don't know the specific item or author that you're looking for, then we have other databases. We have databases that are subject specific. So, for example, if someone was a nursing student, we can point them towards a database that just includes research materials on nursing mm -hmm. or education. There are these specialized databases. And then there are more interdisciplinary broad ones that cover a, a wide range of topics. You know, uh, I was talking to someone not too long ago, and they they uh, compare this to the shopping mall because in the shopping mall you'll have specialized stores that might uh, sell athletic shoes or sunglasses yes. uh, and then you'll have a department store which inc includes many different types of items so that might be the subject specialized database versus the more interdisciplinary database that covers a wide range of subjects 
Then the other thing we have is called SearchWise. And what SearchWise does is it combines all of those things into one and uh, you're searching basically the complete holdings of the library in one place. So this is the most comprehensive search that we have and includes uh, journal articles, magazine articles, books, ebooks, streaming video, um, newspaper articles, basically almost the complete everything. content. Just about everything. There's some things that aren't in it, but the, the majority of them are. A while back, I went into uh, the library looking for some content about Pope John Paul II. Yes. And I found nothing. How do I go about requesting a book from another library, if that's possible? Okay, well, if, if there were certain books that you were looking for that we didn't own, we have a service called Interlibrary Loan. And this works two different ways. Number one, if you're searching in the library's catalog for the book, and it doesn't come up that we own it, there may be a link in the upper right hand corner that says you borrow. And what you borrow does is it allows you to order the book from another library within the state university system and they'll send it here to FAU. And you just log in with your OWL card number and the month and date of your birthday to use that. And the other one is called Iliad. And what Iliad does is it includes not only the state university system but basically the whole country and they can even get some international materials as well and that will also get not only books but also journal articles and when someone orders a journal article it'll normally be digitized and they'll send it to your email and you'll be able to pick it up online so um, you borrow is one that goes through the mm -hmm. library's catalog and then the other is Iliad and you have to register to use Iliad create an account and then you'll be able to order books, journal articles and other things that we don't own in our library. I should have contacted you months ago. You, you would have been very helpful. Well that, in, that's, that's a good in, point Bob in, because, in my research. because you know our librarians are, uh, are here in the library to help but then that's uh, one of our primary uh, purposes in my department, the reference department, is to help people with their research to locate items uh, that they need for their research. So please contact us if, you, if you're not finding what you need. And one of my favorite things in the library is that you can uh, sign up for a room, a private room with computers in it so you could bring up a few friends and, and study in private. Uh, yes, uh, these are called group study rooms. And uh, in order to get one of these, you do have to have two or more people and you actually check out a key at the circulation desk in the library uh, to check out a study room for uh, two hours. And some of the study rooms are larger and will have a large computer in it as for a collaborative workstation. And there are other ones that don't have a computer, but they'll have a monitor on the wall. So if someone has their own laptop or if they check out a laptop from the media center, they can plug that in and then everyone in the group can view the monitor and see what's on the screen there. Um, one other thing is that these are very popular, these rooms. And uh, during the fall semester, sometimes you'll come in and they'll all be checked out. And what will happen then is that we'll give you a pager, like in a restaurant, and when someone brings back a key, uh, you'll get beeped to let you know that a room is available at that time. Sounds good. Tell me a little bit about, um, you have a, a cafeteria in the library or a snack bar. What, what, what are the rules that go along with that? Okay, That's well, rare. I, well, uh, Actually, what we have in the library, we have a Dunkin' Donuts, um, and they do serve uh, donuts in there, uh, as well as coffee and other kinds of drinks. Um, and uh, people can eat in the library, but we do ask them not to bring in things like pizzas and burgers and items that have a strong odor or might uh, create a mess or uh, bring uh, pests into the library as well. What else can you borrow from the library? Like if you need headphones or if you need a calculator for, to, for an exam, can you actually take y it out? Y yes, that's check, a, check it out. That's a great question. Uh, we have in the library on the first floor a room called the Media Center. And the Media Center has available laptops that can be checked out for students to use in the library. They also have iPads that students can check out and they can take those home for a week. And they also have other kinds of technology. Uh, they have things like uh, scientific calculators, 
flip cams and uh, e-readers and some other devices. And there are also headphones available at the circulation desk, which you can check out. And I think they may also sell uh, cheap earbuds there for a dollar as well. So are there any fees relating to uh, if you want to check out headphones or calculators, take it off campus, take it home with you? Uh, there, well, are no, there are no fees to do that. Uh, however, if items are returned late, especially something like a laptop or an iPad, then there are charges. Mm -hmm. And of course, if, uh, if students check out uh, books, there'll be an overdue fine uh, yeah, if they're brought right. back late as well. And uh, if the overdue fine isn't paid, it could place a hold on uh, someone's records and yeah. hold, hold up their graduation or that kind of thing. So we encourage people to uh, pay the fines in a, uh -huh. in a timely manner if they get them. Yeah. What are class guides? Oh, uh, on our webpage, we have uh, some guides that are both subject guides and class guides which uh, will highlight some of the information resources that are useful to do research within a specific area. Mm -hmm. And these are kind of broken down by the uh, colleges at FAU. So if you go in under arts and letters, you'll find things like uh, English and art history and so forth. Uh, science would have biological sciences and geosciences and Th so forth. This is seen on a computer? Yes, these are, these are guides to resources that are right in the middle of the library's webpage. Uh, mm -hmm right below SearchWise, um, which uh, can be accessed by anyone using the library. And they're just kind of uh, tools to help people do research mm -hmm. more efficiently. Tell me about your digital collections. Uh, well, um, there are uh, a number of digital collections in our library. Um, we have a department actually called the Digital Library and they will actually scan different types of material for special collections. So there are items in there from the archives, a number of different uh, collections of rare materials. And uh, another thing they do uh, is called the digital repository. And this is a, a place where students and faculty at FAU can place things online. And uh, for an, an example of that might be every year the, uh, the dance majors have a, uh, a presentation called Dances We Dance, which gets video recorded. Mm -hmm. And these will be placed in the digital repository, the uh, recordings of their dances. Uh -huh. And so then their parents and grandparents can go online and if they weren't able to come to the live event and see what they were doing in the dance recital. So could I actually put something up into that database um, as a student? It's more geared toward faculty at this point. Um, but if you work with a faculty member, that could be possible. Ah, okay, that sounds very good. Uh, during final exam week, yes, is the library open 24 hours a day? Uh, the library is not open 24 hours a day at this time. However, um, in the spring semester, we took a, a survey of students at the library and users of the library and whether they were satisfactory or not. And uh, so what we've done is that we've now uh, increased our hours. So we stay open till 2 a.m. Oh, okay. Um, from Sunday through Thursday. We open earlier on Saturday morning now at 10.30 and open a little bit earlier during the week at 7.40. So we have increased our hours. Uh, we're still not open 24 hours. Now we're also going to look at these later hours and see if people are actually using the building then or not because uh, it might sound like a good idea, but let's see how many people are actually using it during those time slots as well. All right, well, I learned a lot with you today. Well, I'm thanks. very glad that you came down to be a guest here at Faces for Good at OWL TV. And I wanna thank you very much and hope to have you back again. Uh, thank you, Bob. It's my pleasure. All right, Ken. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye. Bye now.